Hello. Uh, if you've never seen me before, I'm Coin Ring Maker from CoinRingMaker.com. I make a lot of different types of coins into rings. Uh, for example, I'm wearing a 1964 90% silver half dollar today. I'll polish that up a little bit. And uh, what we're going to be working on in this live is this one ounce fine silver Eric Blood Axe. And I haven't worked on this round before, so it's going to be interesting to see how it comes out as a ring. I'm just going to wait a little bit for a couple more people to show up. While we wait, y'all feel free to tap the screen a little bit. There's a better look at the uh, 64 Kennedy half dollar I'm wearing. And we'll take a good look at this round now. now this round really caught my eye when I first saw it. It just has incredibly impressive depth and detail. And not only do I really, really like the head side of this round, the tail side is also just freaking awesome. So I'm almost torn on which side to make facing out. I know I'm gonna have to do heads on the first one, but I'm I'm really interested to see how all these different weapons end up looking on a finished ring. But that'll be half that'll have to be for another day. So we've got about 150 people in here. So we'll go ahead and get started here in just a second, making this into a ring. Uh, if at any time during this live you guys have any questions, feel free to put them in the chat. If you'd like to check out my shop while you watch me work, you can stay here on TikTok. Just tap that little gold chain link down somewhere at the bottom of the screen. That'll take you to my shop. And while you're looking around there, you guys can use the coupon code WELCOME to save 10% off anything you might want to order. Alright, let's go ahead and get started. The first thing we need to do is tap the screen a bunch. I'm just kidding. Um, the first thing we need to do is punch a hole in the center of the coin. So we're going to prep our auto punch. Uh, this is a larger round. It's a one ounce fine silver round. So I am going to be using a bit of a larger punch on it. We're going to use a 5 eighths inch punch. I usually use a half inch. But I think this larger one gonna work out a little better. I'm gonna put down a little bit of blue shop paper towel on each side of this to help protect the detail. You really don't want any metal on metal contact. It'll mar up the details. So now that we've got that set up, I'm gonna tighten this down. Now this is a auto centering punch. So it's gonna move the coin right to the middle because it's kind of cone shaped at the top. So as we tighten this down, it'll auto center. It's really cool specialty tool. Make sure that's nice and tight. And I'm gonna move the camera up a little bit here. Now y'all can tap the screen if you want to. We currently have one like. So if you got some free fingers, you know. <laughs> you know. All right, here's our punch. And we're just going to hammer that on through our coin here. Check out how our center punch is looking. And just look at that detail on this thing. It is insane. That's pretty cool. coins looking thanks for hitting the follow button isn't that cool uh, if you'd like to see like start to finish uh, coin rings I recommend visiting my uh, YouTube channel it's just called coin ring maker 
Uh, I repost all my lives on there so you can you can watch the whole process and kind of pick and choose which uh, coin you want to watch. Uh, I've never worked on this one before and we pretty much just started. We've only punched a hole in it. So if you want to watch the whole process, you know, stick around. Now, if you have a really short attention span, you can watch kind of like sped up uh, coin ring making videos. Those are on my TikTok profile. So if you want to see those, just hit the follow button. They'll show up. Pretty rad. Look at the detail on the axe. A Celtic knot on there. Sick. You really don't see this kind of depth and a lot of coins. I'm really impressed with it. All right, uh, what we're gonna do next is clean up this inside edge. You can see it's nice and sharp and rough from where we punched a hole right through it. So I'm gonna take a deburring tool and just kind of cut away at that sharp edge. I will admit this is kind of the slow boring part, at least to me. Uh, some people kind of like how the metal shavings come off, but if you want to go check out what like my finished work looks like, just tap this gold chain or the link in my TikTok profile and just kind of snoop out the website. I make a bunch of different types of coins into rings and I sure would appreciate you going and taking a look. If you tap the chain, you'll stay on TikTok so you can still hear me talk and stuff. Sorry to be so salesy, but I got to get you all to the website somehow coinringmaker.com link in the profile or tap the gold chain at the bottom of the screen if you have any questions let me know uh, this is called a deburring tool deburring it's so one word you can usually find them in like hardware stores uh, some plumbing stores carry them too it's not really a specialty jewelry tool uh, it's kind of more for uh, I think cleaning up the inside of uh, like pipe but it works really good for cleaning up the inside of coin rings I've got a couple of them I just uh, I like the different handles I got the these all do the same thing. Really, it's the blade that matters. And I've got a couple different size uh, deburring blades so I can get different angles inside the coin and clean them up. It really, <laughs> it beats sandpaper, I'll tell you that much. I've had some people come on here and get real mad at me. Be like, do you even know how to use a deburring tool? And I'm like, for what it's supposed to be used for? Not really. But I have been using it on coins for a long time. Dude, you have been the first one. Over and over. I think I'm just getting better at, like, mesmerizing people. Like, hypnotizing them with my low calm voice as I slowly turn coins into rings because the the comment section's been a little quiet I think I'm just being too soothing I gotta pump up the uh, the adrenaline start acting like an NPC maybe I don't know <laughs> that's not gonna happen I'm not gonna do it We got that inside edge nice and smooth we're going to anneal this this is a uh, process where we heat it up with fire 
and that's going to kind of soften the metal and make it less brittle. You have this one? Dude, this coin is sick. Well, I'm glad I can be, uh, be educational. Be out here helping others. It's always good. Yeah, this is the first time I've I've worked on this particular round, so I'm pretty excited to see how it comes out. So as long as you aren't fraudulently defacing currency, it's not really against the law. So like if I was taking uh, <laughs> taking like pennies and making them look like dimes and trying to spend them, like that would be against the law, but like making coins into jewelry has been it's been done for literally thousands of years like it's one of the first things people really made jewelry out of uh, there are a couple countries that are more defensive about what you do with their currency but in the united states as long as you aren't trying to defraud somebody or like counterfeit money it's it's all good If you'd like to learn more about that, I do have a, uh, a blog post on my website, coinringmaker.com. It's one of the buttons pretty close to the top. It's like a three-minute read, but uh, it's co-written with a lawyer. Like, I really wanted to cover my bases. But sometimes people are pretty stubborn about uh, believing me. But it's, it's a, I don't know, it's a good blog post if you want to check that out. It, like, dives into the law a bit more. Really cool round. You got it too? See, I just got these. I, I love it. I'm going to have to check out more in this series, The Legendary Warriors. I'm going to have to see what other ones they have. But I really like this one. Got some fake coins from someone online. Dang. Yeah, I really try to stick with like the most trustworthy options when buying coins like i used to try and buy from people here on tiktok that are part of like the coin family and like i'm not dogging on any of them either but you have to be careful especially when you're spending like what it costs to to buy some of these things you want to make sure you're getting the real thing so If the deal's too good to be true, it probably is. Yeah. Uh, I, I have... Um, Sally, I have a video on YouTube. I think it's called, uh, like, Coin Ring Tools Don't Have to Cost Thousands of Dollars. Uh, it's, it's one of my more popular videos. And it just kind of breaks down the tools I use to start doing this. And, like, you're not going to get like super beautiful rings but you can learn the process and like kind of understand the limits of coins and stuff without spending a whole bunch of money and like seeing if you if you enjoy this as a hobby i would recommend checking that out and like start with cheaper tools sell some rings buy some better tools that's what i did So I've reinvested a lot of my pro like sales back into the tools. sick 
Uh, the ball is Delrin. Ooh. It's just really hard plastic. It's a three quarter inch Delrin ball. And this one's been like marred up a little bit. I got a pack of, I think like 50 of them and I just change them out every once in a while once they start to uh, wear down. This is Delrin as well. I have, it's got like a little magnet on it and uh, it sits on the head of my Arbor Press. So I really don't want uh, any more metal on metal contact with the ring than possible because that's when you start losing detail and I really like to keep all that sick detail. I didn't even notice there was a dragon on his shield. This is cool. Yeah, these uh, dampening blocks usually come with, uh, like, rods that are, like, I don't know, two and a half, three inches long. And they didn't fit very well, like, on my Arbor Press setup. So I tried a ball bearing, and it balanced so much better, and it gives a really, really good um, first fold compared to using, like, a 17-degree die. So that was like an accidental kind of genius moment right there. But it works really well for that first fold. This is an Eric Blood Axe. One ounce fine silver round from the Legendary Warriors series. It's the first time I've worked on one of these. And it's coming along really nicely. Well, we got about 500 people in here, so I'm going to do a short commercial break. Uh, if you guys have never seen me before, I'm Coinring Maker from coinringmaker.com. Uh, you can visit the link in my profile. We've got a sale right now on my most popular coin ring, which is the 90% 90, 90 silver state quarter coin ring. I've got all 50 states available in sizes 4 to 12, and they're 20% off right now through the link in my profile. End of commercial break. All right, how was that? I'll get back to work. So after folding this a little bit, it does tend to work harden. Like as you shape it, the, the metal rehardens. So I'm gonna kneel it again. If you haven't yet, make sure to hit that follow button. And if you have any questions, let me know. We got 2,500 likes on this live. That's pretty good. Thanks for watching. Detail's still looking really nice on it. Like, even the Celtic knot on the axe. Look at that. Sick. All right, we're going to go back to the one-time Arbor Press. And keep folding it. Let's see what die this will fit in.
see if we can switch to a smaller die yet. I try and put it in the smallest die it'll fit in. This one's still overlapping, so we're not quite there yet. What I don't want to do is push it all the way through the die. It's just kind of up and down, man. <laughs> I've had it drop down to like eight from like a thousand. It's weird. But I do appreciate y'all sticking around and watching me work. No, I don't have any kind of machine that I can just pop these into. I was talking about like uh, penny smashing machines that you might find at like Six Flags or SeaWorld. Where you put in like 50 cents and a penny and it spins and impresses like a design on an elongated penny smashes it you ever seen one of those to have one sitting around I could show but I don't know where it is. Uh, let's see, that's pretty big. Looks like it's about a little over a size 13. I'm going to jump right into reducing this. I'm going to try and get it down to about a nine and a half. So we're going to wrap it in some Blue Monster PTFE plumbing tape. Wrap that all around there. The Ike, I think it's at a size 12. It's 11 and 3 quarters. It did shine up really nicely. came out pretty cool see before I've tried to make this particular coin this is a Ike's uh, dollar from 1974 and anytime I made it like my size the date always got smashed up so on this one I stopped at about a size 12 a little under and it looks much better so I think that's just where I'm gonna have to stop to make it so I can make it look good 
which is a shame because that's too big for me. Yeah, Ike is a tricky one. I've heard a lot of people talk about Franklin's. Like Franklin half dollars being really difficult. I feel like I've gotten them down. I can handle them. These Ike dollars are something else. We're gonna pop this in our Swedish wrap. Can you make the ring you're doing right now in a size 10? Yes. Uh, this is a one ounce fine silver round. They are 300 on the website. And uh, this is the first time I've made one of these. So it's not on the website yet. Uh, will be probably in the next three days. Uh, I'll try and get it today if I can get the product photos of it. But I need like product photos of the ring before I can list it on my website. So I have to make a demo one. And that's what I'm doing here. So this should be on the website within the next three days uh, if you're interested. But they are $300. If you'd like to see some of the other um, one ounce silver rounds that are available, uh, just go to buycoinrinks.com and go to categories, uh, coin rings, fine silver, and then one ounce. Dude, I'm getting sick of those comments on my videos. Because they come in at like 15 at a time. It's just like wham, 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 wham. Super annoying. I'm not even going to say the name of the place. It's like, do you bots not have anything better to do? Pretty cool. So the blue tape is like a buffer between the ring and the die. The more metal on metal contact you have, the more likely you are to like lose detail. And that's kind of what I was showing with like this ring in particular. See the bottom half of the numbers is just kind of smashed in. It's the same way with the text over here. And usually I can prevent this with the blue tape, but something about this coin in particular, if I go below size 12, uh, I still end up losing detail. It's going good. So we're working on a one ounce silver round I've never worked on before. Always like working on a new coin ring. Nah, dude, this one's this one's fine silver. Got that to the bottom of this tie. So I'm gonna find the next smallest one. Do, 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 do. Where is it? There it is. <laughs> Not something I would recommend. <laughs> If you've ever actually hit a zinc penny <laughs> with a torch, uh, it's not its not a good idea. It's the metal on the outside it has a higher melting temperature than the metal on the inside. Which uh, <laughs> causes problems. They kind of explode hot melted zinc all over the place. I've only done this twice on accident. 
with 1982 pennies. Because that is the year right on the edge. So I thought 1982 pennies were copper. But they're real tricky that year. Some of them are copper. And some of them are copper coated zinc. I found that out in a way I did not expect. <laughs> now the second time I I didn't sort my dates well enough. <laughs> One got by me. I thought it was like a an eighty-one. Is it eighty-two? That one was sneaky. But now I just stop at 1980, so it's not even a problem. <laughs> I don't even trust 81s anymore. 1980 or earlier, or nothing. You ever seen the guy on here who's got like the solar death ray and he's like today I'm gonna put this rock under the solar death ray and see if we can melt it into molten lava I fucking love it it's a great TikTok channel And she's got this giant, <laughs> I don't know if he got it from like a flat screen TV or something, but just like a very large magnifying glass. That's pretty great. And I've seen him do a penny and like fuse it with a rock, like cause the melting temperature is just ridiculous. So what we're going to do now is I can see the uh, the inside lip here kind of buckling up on itself. So I'm going to cut some of that away before it gets too out of hand. different blade and try a smaller one. Very skippity, usually not so skippity. What do I do with the center part of the coin I cut out? Uh, I call these center punches. Uh, on my website, there's a couple options for these. I can make them into necklace, like pendants, put them on a necklace, uh, keychains, or like a pin you can put on your hat or your shirt, or you can just get the center punch as like an add-on to the ring. 
there's like four different options. You can get just the ring, the ring and the center punch, uh, the keychain, the necklace, or the pin. So I guess that's five. So we cut away a lot of the metal that was bunching up, but because it's still in kind of a cone shape, it's it's hard to cut this away properly. So I'm gonna fold it a little bit more and then get rid of the rest of that. But first, we anneal. some more blue monster tape I had been using uh, Swedish wraps to get it to this point now I'm gonna move to a different die set these are called the perfect pants and they're kind of weird because they don't have any marking on them like the Swedish wraps do. These are just kind of blank, whereas this one has a lot of information on it. But I can tell you they are called Perfect Tens. Where do you buy your quarters? I'd like to get a wholesale uh, Silver State quarters. Uh, mostly I get those on eBay. You just want to be very specific when you're, like, searching for what you're looking for. Because uh, with the proof sets, there's two kinds of proof sets. There's clad proof sets and there's silver proof sets. So you want to make sure your actually says silver on it in the listing. That's a mistake I made pretty early on a couple times. We squished it down all the way to the bottom of that die now, like this way. And we're gonna flip it over and do it the other way. I'll usually do when I'm looking for like a set of silver state quarters is I'll go to eBay I'll open her up I'll type in say 2007 90% silver proof quarter set and then I'll sort it to buy it now and lowest price and then look at the pictures, make sure it's actually what I'm looking for, and that's usually how I go about it. Pretty damn good. Uh, it really differs from like ring to ring. Like some I can I can do in like 10 minutes 
which would be like a size eight quarter ring because those are just like phew, I've done like a hundred of those so I can do them really fast but like a one ounce fine silver round that can take like an hour to like three hours to sometimes a couple days because like I, <laughs> my hands aren't doing what they need to do uh, so it, it 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 really varies so I'm I'm a little hesitant to like give you a direct answer to that question it's it's different from ring to ring. Sometimes you just get like a really stubborn coin. Like this one right here, for example. Usually I can get like really nice shavings like this with my deburring tools. And this one is just not wanting to work with me. And I have to try not to rush it because if this blade skips on the inside, I'm going to end up messing up all that nice detail. But I have to get rid of all of that extra metal. So that's going to take a minute. Uh, Dremel, I don't really like to work with Dremels because the uh, room for error goes up a lot. I prefer to work with just hand tools. It's like if I slip with a Dremel, it's almost guaranteed that the ring is going to be like damaged beyond my quality control. It'd probably be easier though. Yeah, power tools make mistakes. Yeah. I'd rather go slow by hand. In the mud, uphill. The machines are taking over, man. I gotta be ready to work without them. That sucks though. <laughs> I mean, I have had it work. Not 100% of them mess up, but it's a higher percentage than if I do it by hand. See if we put a new blade on. Maybe it'll cut nicer. Maybe. Uh, I haven't yet, so mostly I just I just keep them in like baggies. All the extra bits here. Soft state. I mean, I don't know if annealing would help. It probably could. Yeah. A conical sandstone. That's not a terrible idea. <laughs> I kind of love it. Yeah. Like, if I had, like, a cone-shaped sandstone, I could just... That's, that's absolutely brilliant. Honestly, that's a great idea. Usually I can cut 
that edge really nice and clean. Like this one, for example. Something about this round, it's just not wanting to, to grab onto it. Like even with a new, a brand new blade, which is weird. No, no, you're fine. I, I'm not dogging on you. And like this, the lip on the inside of this particular round, since it's a one ounce round, is quite a bit thicker. So there's more metal to remove than I usually have to. So I don't really mind kind of chipping away at it at this stage. Once I get closer to the amount I want removed, I'll, I'll be much more careful and clean it up. But it is being being pretty stubborn. <laughs> All right, so we've got it in a kneeled state now. Probably still gonna chatter, but we'll roll on with it. Just terrible. What I used to do <laughs> is clean this up with a hand file, and I don't want to do that. <sighs> These are not doing the job they're supposed to. My to burn tools are letting me down today, y'all. Yeah, we might just whittle at it. Old school, just chip.